ready, Johnny? Born ready, my friends. Always born ready. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Six Pack Lab, your podcast for the latest and greatest in health and fitness. We are here, episode number four. We've got a very special and a very important guest today, Mr. Clark Bartram. What's up, my brother? Welcome to the show. Man, I'm excited to be here. What a great studio. You got the Vols back here. You're representing the SEC, alma mater. SEC, SEC. SEC. There you go. Glad to have you here, man. Super excited to have you in town all the way from San Diego, St. Diego. Yeah, you were just there. Yeah, you just didn't there. You come to my house. Beautiful place. Well, yeah, I know. I we. You had the invite yeah. to come to the driveway crew and train, and you didn't. I know. Well, to be, well, because only the, my only excuse is we were actually busy training okay. already. All we right. were, we went to Stern's gym, the old school gym. But you're uh, excused. Um, okay, only this time, but next time I'm having. The, I'm going to do the bachelor party out there, so I'm going to come. Okay. We're going to come hang out. So we got Clark today as our as very special guest in our interview. We're also, of course, first going to start things off covering the latest in health and fitness news. We're also going to hop over to the gym fails to fixes. And then we're going to talk with Clark. So first, and then always, let's not forget about Ray. We've got Ray on the ones and twos. What's up? What's up? What's up? Glad to have you here always, my friend. <laughs> choo, choo, choo. All right. <laughs> let's first talk about the latest in health news. So I picked this article up from Healthline.com. They're hit or miss on their articles, to be honest with you. But they've been a lot better about citation and that sort of thing. So uh, I picked up on this one because... It's a, the, the title of the article was 16 Delicious and Nutritious Purple Foods. Purple Foods. So the reason I clicked on it was because I was curious. I was like, well, I know of a couple purple foods. What about you, Clark? Dinosaur meat. Barney. The b- dinosaur purple. meat. Barney. <laughs> Barney meat. Exactly. Um, or or uh, the Grimace from McDonald's, wasn't that? Yeah. Wasn't he purple, yeah, he too? purple. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> the, I, picked on it, I picked up on it because I was just curious what how they filled this list out with 16 purple foods so uh ray 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 ray's got it pulled up here he's going to always like always put the article in the description so you guys can click on it and check out it yourself i'm just going to list off a couple of the foods that you're going to see on the list purple sweet potatoes purple carrots red dragon fruit well w- red is not purple i i yeah i know i that understand makes no sense. so that's one we'll, off we'll, the list we'll get there we'll get there so there's there's i guess there's loopholes to being purple and the next one, forbidden rice. Oh, yeah! I, I saw that one. I kind of got excited. So it's I've had it before. It's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, I've had it once before too. Now there's a bunch of other foods on there. You might be surprised with some of them. My pur- my favorite purple food that is on the list: purple cabbage. I'm a yeah. coleslaw guy. Yeah. What about you? Like coleslaw? I had it today in the airport. Fantastic for fiber. Yeah. You know what other purple food I like is purple haze beer. You ever had that from Abita? No. <laughs> no. Purple Haze beer? No. Yeah. No, it's good. It's like a real dark from a beta uh, brewing company. I think they're from out of New Orleans or something. Mm. Check it out. It's pretty good. Anyways, so, um, and then there's another food on the list that I didn't hear about. Ray, can you scroll to it? It's called What's the it? Purple Star Apple. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's know, back up. It's back up? Yeah, right, right, right there. Right there. Look right at right that right one there. with the spoon. Look at that. So, and in the description, that's this one. I've never seen this. The fruits have a sweet flesh that secretes a milky juice and has a radiating star pattern when cut. The most disgusting words you could use. It, flesh, juice, and milky, what else? Milky. Say, milky. Milky. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of thought, I thought it was maybe it looks kind of good. I mean, it looks like It he's, looks good, but the way yeah, you describe yeah, it, yeah, you he know, flesh word doesn't usage, sound. Yeah, yeah, flesh. Yeah, you don't use flesh. Milky and. Don't use flesh. Yeah. It's, they creamy maybe was a little better. They might as well throw moist in there, Mo- too. Moist and damp. <laughs> <laughs> These writers might not be marketers. So. Yeah. <laughs> These writers are going to hate us. <laughs> yeah. So why, let's get to the root of the whole article here. Why is purple good? So purple is good, and you want purple in your in your uh, veggies and fruits. The darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. The sweeter the According juice. To Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> We're quoting <laughs> Tupac over here. Uh oh. So foods deep, rich purple color due to the type of polyphenol content. And if you tuned in the, our earlier podcast, we talked about the importance of polyphenols, and the specific polyphenol blend that a lot of these had are called anthocyanins. Say that one time with me, Clark. Anthocyanins. anthocyanins. <laughs> Right? That's what it sounds like. <laughs> Poly, it's a polyphenol compound that may help protect against chronic conditions like certain cancers and heart disease, according to the research. Um, it also helps give a lot of the fruits and vegetables you see on the list here red, blue, or purple hues, So, or a combination of the few. That's why 
maybe that's why that one wasn't it was red but maybe it looked purple or something it was on I don't the, know. the borderline way to being purple. it was almost there and uh, anthocyanins also give autumn leaves their color do you know that i didn't know that either so learned yeah. a lot in this but anthocyanins is a powerful antioxidant so uh, it's also, again, these are the ones that are linked to specific studies at helping protect cells and prevent against certain type of cancers and chronic conditions. So my thoughts on it, um, first, in the beginning of the article, it says super tasty treats. These are not all super tasty treats. Yeah, not at all. They talked about kale on this list. It's not a super tasty treat. Yeah. Let's what be if it's real. purple? It they might lie. be different. I've never seen I've had kale. I've had some purple kale. It is no bueno. It is, <laughs> it is worse it's than regular kale. <laughs> it is like kale 2.0, twice as shitty. <laughs> <laughs> now as always so there's a lot of they talk a lot about the studies and cancer prevention that sort of thing now that all needs to be obviously taken with a grain of, grain of salt um of course these types of things are going to be healthy and of course i think if you implement these sort of things into your diet it could potentially help prevent that sort of thing i think the big takeaway is that you should have some color in your diet from fruits and vegetables Absolutely. I, purple asparagus, I've never seen that, and I want to try it because I am a huge asparagus fan. Have you had white asparagus? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's big in Germany. I've never I go had to the Germany. purple either, but yeah. I've, yeah, I know. This is, and then the acai berries, everybody's, that's that's kind of the, a hot hot one yeah, right that's now. The, yeah. the acai I think bowls. acai berries are it kind of going out. I mean, they were the big, and they're on the way out. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, those don't really taste that good either. I don't think so. Acai Plain. berries. Yeah, no bueno. Yeah, that's why they put them in those bowls with like sugar and yogurt yeah, and, and all that. Butter yeah, and peanut and butter. Yeah, and chocolate nibs. Yeah. <laughs> Reese's peanut butter cups. I like the purple cauliflower at the number one at the top, though. I have had that. Yeah. I've had that. They had that. I found that at like Whole Foods and I was so intrigued. I just had to scoop it up. Um, there goes your emoji right there. That's what I was going to say. That is Clark's favorite emoji right there. <laughs> and we all know why. <laughs> so clearly, <laughs> oh, there are a lot of polyphenol compounds, and you don't have to necessarily have all of them. Like all, You don't have to have, like, I don't think you guys need to go at home and go to the store and buy all these. But I think maybe look at the list and maybe pick one out and start to implement it in your diet. Like the real easy one, number one on the list is blackberries. Those are great. Now, that's a pretty tasty treat. Here's the other thing with these types of fruits, and a lot of them contain a lot of fiber and fructose, which is a natural sugar. So, yeah, it's sugar, but as long as your energy balance is where it needs to be, you're not going to get fat from eating fruit. Um, it's going to help prevent cravings. It's going to help to keep you full and keep you satiated. Don't be afraid to eat fruit at night. If you're, as long as your energy balance is where it needs to be, you're good to go. Yeah, man. For sure. Or vegetables, you know. What are your, it all in. What, but what are your thoughts on this, on the polyphenols and the purple fruits and you know, I like the variety and I think it's really important. You know, as much as we're joking around and playing and having fun with it, it is really important. And I think people need to understand that these things are on the earth for a reason. <laughs> you know, they're not right. injected with some purple dye. dye. Yeah. They're born that way. It was created. Yeah. 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 And it's, it, it's that way for a reason. For a reason. If we take that stuff naturally from the earth and put it in our body, it just would make common sense that... It's doing something good for you. Absolutely. That's so, it. So I hear, you know, out there, I heard out there that, is it true that the darkness in the color, like, indicates potency or freshness? I mean, does that really affect it? So I think maybe that's going to, depending on, I think, feel with these. A lot of these are going to maybe be on the fresh level, whether it's, like, ripe yeah. or, or fresh or if it's kind of getting um, rotten or whatever. The... It doesn't necessarily, the brightness of the color doesn't necessarily indicate the amount of polyphenols or the anthocyanins, um, but the color does indicate that it does have some sort of polyphenol compound. Like we talked about before, um, there's a lot of fruits and a lot of vegetables that do have polyphenols. So these ones specifically are going to give it the red, blue, or purple. We okay. also talked about the vegetables that have other types of polyphenols that are get like green, Mm -hmm. and orange and red so it does kind of indicate that you're going to get the anthocyanins out of the purple and the dark stuff gotcha. so you do want to shoot for that awesome that's good to know good question right thanks yeah. oh, man <laughs> ray's been ray's been dicing up his diet a little bit he, he's been asking me just here and there asking me a lot <laughs> yeah, yeah just like one or two a day he's trying they're they're adding up it looks though, good I, 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 yeah of course yeah. it looks like drake <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. ladies yeah. man <laughs> no i'm trying i'm trying you know i've i've never really ate good my entire life um, I was only fit like throughout high school and early college because I just worked out so much and I played basketball my whole life. But uh, as I got older and had a sedentary job and stuff like that, it kind of caught off, caught up to me, sort of. So as I got older, 
Well, well, I'm age? still young. I'm yeah. still, <laughs> I'm only 24, but okay. Um, but not working out and eating the same way I did when I was 16. Yeah, I, life I will say, catch up to you at 24 or yeah. 34 and on yeah. the way up. Man. So I noticed a little gut and not looking how I used to. So I'm, you know, trying to get back into it. That's so, awesome. I'm yeah. glad to hear that, man. Yeah. And I love, I honestly, a lot of, some, some people think maybe guys like Clark and I, we get annoyed with questions like that. I mean, obviously it's going to depend on the scenario. If we're in the middle of a set at the gym working out and some <laughs> dude's coming up, it's like, hey, bro, should I be carbs <laughs> like pre or post workout? That's yeah, yeah. Different. But anybody with like an inquisitive mind that for themselves really wants to bet themselves on it, Clark, which, what do you think? I mean, that's, it's totally cool. Ask. As long as you apply the knowledge, I can't tell you the yes. amount of times that someone has come up to <laughs> yes. me and asked me true. a question, and I know true. for sure yeah. that when I get into it, because you, like me, we get very passionate about the answer, and then we go all in, really not wanting to, but it just takes over, and then in the end, you know, they, you can see the blank face, and it's like, this guy didn't get anything. <laughs> yeah, he then you it. see him a week later, yeah. and hey, did and you start that diet I gave you? <laughs> oh, no, bro, no. I, you know, blah, blah. You know, Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't if, throw your pearl before swine. A guy like Clark, if you see a guy like Clark Bartram with his history and you ask him for advice and you don't do it, that's just plain ignorance. I mean, that's yeah. just plain ignorance. I mean, that's like going to seeing a doctor at the gym and being like, hey, bro, I got this thing on my arm over here. I'm really worried about it. And he's <laughs> like, yeah, you should probably get that checked out. Yeah. And then you don't. That's yeah. just stupid. Right. Yeah. So, and we're, it's not that we're trying to be mean. It's just like, if you're, if you're going to ask, do it. Yeah. It just shows how many people aren't really willing to do the work. They just mm -hmm. want to feel better about themselves mm -hmm. by asking the question. Correct. Oh, I asked the question. Now I Correct. feel good. Correct. You, know? you got to follow up. That's the key. All right. Now, Ray, let's move on here. We're going to move on to our, one of my, one of my favorite things to do here. The gym fails to fix this. Yeah. Why don't, why don't you go ahead and pull up that first video we had yeah, there, Ray? So, Clark, what we oh, like to do boy. here, what we like to do here is we like to <laughs> analyze a video. We like to pick a video. And we're not picking on anybody in these videos. We're only here purely for help. We might laugh a little bit, but that's <laughs> yeah. I was um, gonna say we're yeah. laughing with the individual. So we're bit. only here to help. And Clark, I wanna I wanna get your opinion on how we can help this guy out. So, right. Ray, Ray, go ahead and play let's, the video. Let's, let's see what we got here. Play. Okay, so he's on Bosu balls. Yes, Bosu balls. Upside down, those two balls. There you go. <laughs> I give him credit for effort. Let's watch it one more time. Upside down, those two balls. Yeah. Tremendously unstable. Foot slides off, and he's down. Clark, wow. knee jerk. Clark, let's hear the <laughs> knee jerk reaction. Clark's pissed. <laughs> Okay, let me let me first start by saying I get it. I remember when the whole Swiss ball revolution came in. I was at the beginning of that. We would stand on top of Swiss balls and throw medicine balls back and forth of each other until we fell down. We felt like there was something to prove. I feel like uh, th there's a brilliant mind out there in the world who I think if he were to look at this, he would take part of the blame for it, Paul Check. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and he... This, it, it makes sense to a degree, but look, I, I would advise against doing this because in the real world, it doesn't really translate into anything more than squatting without those damn things under your feet. It does not. And check out the dude doing, now let's watch again, the dude doing single arm dumbbell rows right behind them. Mm -hmm. He just kind of like, dude falls down. He's like, he's like. Oh, yeah, you good dog? Every day. Oh, you good dog? Nah, I'm just going to keep rowing. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm just going to keep rowing. I'm just going to finish my set. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I, I, I don't know. I don't the know risk is not worth the reward. That is one of the most risky things. So for reference, there's literally very, very few exercises that should be done on an upside down BOSU ball. And there's very, very few people that are at the level that honestly should be doing that. He's lucky his right ankle didn't break because the way it came off with under that load. Now watch his right ankle here. That looks like, I think it's like 205, 225 maybe. Yeah. Bam, right there. That right yeah. ankle could, it could be broken. It, yeah. I mean, this guy, and, and that's why I say we, we, you know, we're joking around and everything, but hopefully this guy's okay. I mean, but in any event, Clark, how can this guy, what can he do? What, what should he do? Obviously, first we're ditching the BOSU balls, right? Right. Don't do it. You don't need it. You do, it's one or the other. You're either going to do some yeah. like body weight or maybe light dumbbell, like, split squats with an upside down bosu ball and even then you're probably going to be pretty advanced in a split squats when you're going to have one le one leg on the ball one on the floor 
but I don't. There's literally no situations where you should have both feet on and upside down. Both. I would need to ask weight. him what he was trying to accomplish first. Right. Like, oh, hey, yeah. bro, what is it? What was your end goal here? Are you working on balance? Are you working on strength and balance? Are you trying to impress a girl on the other side? Did someone <laughs> dare you to do this? I'm, a, I'm going with the girl, and <laughs> the she's, there's off camera. There has to be a girl that looks like a 24 hour fitness. Yeah, because yeah, it's I just it it. As much as I get it and I've done it, I'm not someone who hasn't done something stupid in the gym myself. Right. I just don't really see the benefit in doing this. So what I would say is lose the BOSU balls, stick to squatting. You can go heavier if that's – the end goal, I think, for anyone lifting weights is to be stronger or more buff. 100%. Okay. Right. So that is not going to make you any stronger or any more buff. Or any buff, any buffer. Any buffer. And to be honest, with balance and – Stabilization, it's not really doing that much either. Nah, it should be for more for you athletes have, and things you like have, that. Right? Yeah, I mean, honestly, there's no, there's, there's, this isn't an exercise. Let's put it that way. This shouldn't be done. Oh, no, none. Yeah, yeah. Base, upside, a loaded spine on upside down base, BOSU balls shouldn't be done, whether you have one foot on two, ball, uh, two different balls or two feet on one ball. Shouldn't be done. Those need to go away. Yeah. If you want to do something like that in an unstable environment, you're maybe going to switch to like, kettlebells you're maybe going to switch to an overhead squat you're maybe going to switch to um those padded cushions those they're like an inch thick and they're made of foam and they give a little bit yeah. of or um, a pillow yeah <laughs> yeah like a pillow or something just yeah. a little off not air stand on a bosu ball with one foot and close your eyes if you can yes. do it for 10 <laughs> yeah. seconds i'll give you 50 grand yeah, 100 <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, a thousand people go to the gym and try right. to stand on. <laughs> I've tried. It is extremely difficult. It's extremely difficult. There's yeah. one guy, and, and it's actually a guy that developed the Bosu ball, uh, David Weck. Mm -hmm. He can do it. I've seen him do it before. Really? He's, he's just unbelievable. And he's the creator. Yeah, he's, he's the creator he of the Bosu, the Bosu ball. So go figure. He, he's been on it probably a little bit more than anyone else has. We got more of these, man. Yeah. So okay. we got an, we actually we got a special one, Clark. I was actually I was looking. Is I originally me? looked for one of these. <laughs> so no. So hang on. So hang on. So I was originally looking for a bench press fail video because I knew I've seen a video of you in the '80s repping out 315 like 10 or 15 times. Right. And I wanted to like have you analyze some dude's bench fucking up. Okay. But I found a bench video where a dude fucked up, but I'm pretty sure he was faking. I'm pretty sure it was fake. Okay. He started yelling like, "Mom." I was like, come on, oh, dog, your mom's on it. No, it wasn't. <laughs> so anyway, so I looked for your bench press video where I saw you repping 315, but I found a different bench press video, and this is one video that you uploaded. So I figured this would be okay to view because you yourself, I guess, is calling yourself out on this. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> so let me give a synopsis on the video. So the Clark's video here, and he had was you were intending on posting a video because you get a questions from guys saying, hey, bro, how much you bench? You get that a lot, right? Yep. So you were like, fuck it, I'm going to make a video, and I'm going to figure out, and you're just like, hey, I'm here, I'm at the gym, I'm going to figure out and show you all, I guess, we'll see how much I can bench. So you start pyramiding up, I think you started at like 225 or whatever, and, you, and you're going up, and you know, 275 and 315, and I mean, you're you're doing it, dog. I am impressed, I'm very much impressed. You go all the way up to 405, I think you pop out two reps. Then you throw two tens on the side. And, all then, hell breaks and then all hell breaks loose. It gets loose. a little crazy. So let's go ahead and, Ray, why don't you go ahead to... Uh, you want to play about halfway through? Or? No, we're, I think it was at about the eight-minute mark is where we're at. So he's already... It's six a long now, video. It is a long video. So now he's already successfully racked up to like 4.05. And then we're going to add, I think, another 10. It's about eight minutes or so, I think. And Clark actually ended up posting this video for the same reason we're doing it now. Yes. What was he thinking? Okay. So we got, this is 425? 10 on each side, 405? 10, I don't even, I yeah. can't see it. I think I remember you. What happened? It went oh, oh, right, oh, right. Oh, easy easy okay, there, bro. Okay, easy, easy, there, easy. Yeah. easy. <laughs> All right, now he's, he's got it unracked. Unracked. Nope. Not happened. Nope. So this is, this is real, right? <laughs> the skinniest guy ever comes and pulls it off of me. So, so, so this is real, right? No. <laughs> it's not. I got you. It's not. I got everyone with oh, this. So God. I, I, <laughs> dude, I'm a good actor. That was okay. That was a, oh, yeah, you mean you got me. So it's not real? <laughs> no, it's not real. This was completely. So you were trying to prove a point of. It was. Okay. So, so are those, my fa are those fake weights? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're even fake weights. Yeah. Oh, Dang, you got me. 
You got you guys, so <laughs> okay. So let me tell you. Okay, let's what's 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 the video about then? What, okay, so this. All right, I'm I'm gonna give away some secrets here. Uh -oh. Okay, that a lot of people might get mad at me for for giving away. That's okay. Well, this is this is exactly what we're here for. Okay. We're gonna get to. All right. So this is the most iconic studio. Most every photo you've ever seen in Iron Man magazine was shot right here in this studio. I, I knew I've seen those before. With Michael <laughs> Nevue. I know, I know who that photographer yes, is. Yes, and he was part owner of Iron Man magazine. He shot everyone from Arnold to Lou to Frank Zane to you name it, you know, uh, Lee Haney. They've all been in there, and they've all been on these machines. Now, everything you see in here is real. It's a gym. Everything's on wheels. You roll it around, and you set up the lights, and you do the photo shoots. Well, I've done photo shoots with real weights. You've done uh, photo shoots with it's, real weights. It, honestly, it's terrible. It's hard. It's exhausting. It's very hard. I've done TV shows with real weights. So someone at some point in time decided, hey, let's make fake weights that look really, really real. And I have fooled more people, and I was just playing. At the very end of this, I, I think I say these weights are fake. What do you think I'm stupid Damn, I or didn't something ask like that? Johnny, always watch the video to the end. Watch the video always to the end. Always watch the video to the end. I had so <laughs> many people hating me. Look at that acting. Because, Wait a minute. Because Look at this acting. Kind of crazy there. Oh, Damn, I should have watched this. This is terrible. <laughs> Look at this acting. <laughs> I didn't see this. I didn't, as soon as it went on your chest, I was like, I'm using this video. Look at this. This is Academy Award winning. <laughs> Look at this. Okay. The pain. Try that at home. That was stupid. Freaking stupid. Freaking stupid. All right. Yeah. All right. Now he's, he's, he's hamming it up a little bit there at the end. He's hamming it up. That was Academy Award winning stuff right there. So, yes, every single one of those weights on there is fake. The 45 probably weighs about 15 pounds. Okay. So, there's 15, so 30, there may have been 45, 225 pounds on there. Wow. Maximum. Okay. And, you know, I added Damn, a little I got bit of. Fooled twice today. Add Dang. a little bit of phoniness to Adam. it. Well, I'm actually. Look, I'm now praying before my set. I'm getting ready. I'm doing the whole nine. <laughs> Right there, <laughs> Kawhi. Look at that. <laughs> All right, so so the the dumbbells, the barbells, everything is fake. So you see these guys in magazines, you know, curling eighty, hundred pound. No, no, I'm sorry, I just yes, gave it up. I knew so it. this studio is no longer there. I it's gone it. now. I knew those dudes weren't hammer curling like ninety five pound dumbbells. No. <laughs> For a photo shoot, <laughs> I knew it. I'm so glad I brought this up. Thank this you, this worked out. This <laughs> worked out better than this, you thought it was going to work better out. Better than I thought it was. Dropping knowledge. I knew the whole time, guys. Well, the, the dead giveaway was the skinny guy that came in with the poor acting. Jude is his name. That uh, go back to the him lifting it off. Now, when you look at this again and see him pull this off me, you'll see how easy how, it was. Look, I'm I'm buried. There's no way I'm getting it off. Yeah. He comes. This is skinny butt, and he pulls uh, it. Yeah, right yeah. There's no, yeah. yeah Jude, Jude doesn't do any deadlifting Jude on the side. Jude doesn't deadlift on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Great video. I'm so glad we brought this up. So all in all, so speaking of fake weights, there's people that still use fake weights, and um, they don't, or they try to say they're real. Some people, certain particular people on social media, Instagram, oh. men, and, men and women. Um, and I'm not sure that Brad Castleberry does use fake weights, though. I knew, I, he knew who I was going to bring up. I don't think you can go into a 24. Now, I don't know the guy. I met him once. I met him before he started. Right, right. I don't think they're going to let you carry in fake weights to a 24 for photo shoots. And I, I don't know. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. But I do. I, I, I have seen him in the gym. Yep. The kid is an athlete. A hundred thousand percent. I've met him. He's a big kid. I've seen him jump. Like in the back of a pickup truck, there is thing up no and, discounting his strength or athleticism. Yeah. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure if he uses fake weights. I know it just goes around, and I know he's a very right. popular name that is often um, uh, accused or whatever. Right. So, so, um, then there was another girl that came. The only, out here recently. the only thing that gets, yeah, I'll, we'll talk about her in a sec. The only thing that gets me is supposedly he's been called out by a lot of people that are like powerlifters and strongmen to, hey man, okay, well let's show it up on the platform. Oh no, well I was just with Michael and he, Hearn, and he and, backs down every time. No, I was. I, Three days ago, I was with Mike Titan. and Heath Evans, and there is a real popular uh, video that went around where Mike called Brad Castleberry over, and Brad was all excited, and Mike kind of lured him into the in, you know, the in the fray. It was at an event. Oh, okay. And he said, hey, you want to compete against Heath in a NFL combine? 
and you can see Brad get a little Keith nervous. Evans is a former NFL player and yeah. also commentator. And strong as yeah, you know, he had the, a beast. Yeah, I mean, he did 225 in his like suit 40 on NFL, on Network. NFL yeah. Network. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. So After Brad, he was done playing. Yeah, Brad didn't want to hear it. So when I was with Mike the other day, I said, hey, whatever happened to the Brad Castleberry thing where you invited him? He's like, he don't, he don't want no part of that. He doesn't want to, you know, compete. Yeah. He doesn't. He, he doesn't want to compete. He doesn't. But, which I, I probably he probably doesn't want to list li, risk getting outlifted, which I'm sure for his brand would probably be not that not great. But it could be great though too. It's like I, go go thing. compete, yeah, man, and show you know? and at least show up, yeah. Like like do your thing and show people that like a hundred percent. Like if you show up to the to the battle, then you're probably not using fake weights. But if you keep backing down like this, people are gonna keep calling now, you out. Dog. Yeah, now you're gonna be questioned. Uh, but yeah, there's a, a a girl. I guess she's maybe Brazilian. I think her name's Gracie or Gracie Ann Barbosa. But there's videos of her going. Uh, was going around of her like ass to grass, like rock bottom squatting, like four oh five for like t- ten or twelve reps, yeah, like pretty... like all the way up, <laughs> all the way down. If um this one now, I'm pretty sure these are fake weights, and she's all natty too. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure, <laughs> definitely all natural. <laughs> and we're I'm not here to call either of these individuals out. We're here just talking. But Clark was talking about the weights and the and the. the Photoshop. I mean, he was using. I right. use fake weights. I, yeah. You just saw it right there, and I admitted yeah. to it. Yeah. I use it's fake just, weights, but just, this bicep ain't fake. So now what? Uh-oh. <laughs> now what? <laughs> <laughs> what? So it's interesting, um, but it's it's something that apparently is still prevalent in the fitness industry for photo shoots. Yeah, for I know photos, that much. For, yeah, for photo yeah. shoots for sure, which I can understand. So all right, we're moving on here. Now let's get to the juicy part. We're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit with Clark here. We're really gonna. We're going to get down to the nitty-gritty and find out about this guy over here because we've already been getting some good intel out of him. We haven't even started the interview yet. So, Clark, why don't you tell everybody how old you are, how young you are. I am 55 right now. My birthday is October 3rd, so I'm going to be 56. I'm closer to 56 than I am 55, as George Foreman would say. (laughs) We're almost level 56. That's great, man. Well, you honestly... and. I'm not just trying to gas you up here because I know you already got you barely fit in the door already, <laughs> but no, dude, you look great. Thank I mean, you. Straight up, I appreciate um, that. longevity and and health it goes a long way when you take care of the body, and you're a prime representation of that. So, where are you originally from? Canton, Ohio, home of the Pro Football Canton, Hall of Fame. Canton, Ohio. That's Did you ever play there? I never played at Canton. I mean, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I've got to play at uh, Heinz Field when okay. I was in high school. They before they tore that down to the. Uh, I'm not Heinzfield. Three Rivers. Three we Rivers. Three State. Rivers. Used to go watch Penn they tore State that games down. there. Yep. Uh, Penn State Pitt played there. Yep, Pitt. Um, but uh, so Canton, Ohio. When did you move out? You're in California now, right? Yep. How long have you been in Cali? I left in 1981. I joined the United States Marine Corps as a way out of Canton, Ohio. Okay. And you went through Pendleton out there in San Diego? Yep. That was my last duty station. Very nice. Well, we obviously appreciate your service, Clark. Thank you very much. Honestly, we uh, appreciate all the, Marines. All the uh, servicemen and women across the country. So thank you for that. You married? 30 years, brother. Same woman. Yeah, put some applause on yeah, that. Yeah, thing. Put a standing ovation on that track. Dude, that's There's not a lot of that these days anymore. What 30 is it, like years. Two man. out of three uh, marriages uh, end up in divorce now, but 30, 33? 30 years married. 30 years. 33 together. together. That's awesome, man. Congratulations yeah, on man. that. You got You got some kids? 28-year-old right? daughter huh? who's a phenomenal athlete. She's probably the best athlete of the family. And then a 24-year-old son who's an amazing athlete. And they're both unbelievable humans. That's awesome. awesome. I'm so happy I'm for you. I'm fans of them as humans. I've seen them in some of your videos, especially your son. And they they look they definitely look like you, spitting images of you. But you can tell that they have the same energy you have. Good energy. Yeah, they're, they're, they're good people, man. I like that, I love man. my kids. Let's dive a little bit deeper into that background. So you said you were uh, military, Marines. How long did you do that for? Just three years. Three years. What's maybe your most memorable t- memorable time from that? Oh gosh, so many, man. Boot camp. My cousin and I went into boot camp together. Okay. And I'll never forget. How old we were you? Eighteen, nineteen, seventeen, seventeen. Holy man. We were sitting at a table just like this, okay. and we were drinking a Michelob light and smoking a joint. Nice. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm hitting this joint, drinking a Michelob. I said, what are you going to do for the rest of your life? He's like, I don't know. What are you going to do? I'm like, let's join the Marine Corps. He's like, really? I'm like, yep. He's like, when? Now we get up, we go down to the recruiter's office, go through all that stuff. We find ourselves in Paris Island, South Carolina <laughs> on the famous yellow footprints. We're standing there. Then they rush us into the building. This is one of the most memorable things ever. I had long feathered hair. 
Yeah, you did. Just, yes, just you did. beautiful, long, yes, feathered did. hair. And my cousin had like an afro, is man. This, just, is this 80s, 70s? 80s. 80s. Yeah, yes. 19, 1981. Yes. Love the 80s. So we go in and they shuffle us into the barber and... Ben, your head shaved before you can. I mean, it's like four. <laughs> you're done, next guy. They put you in a room and they tell you to put your head down. So I put my head down, and it's like in school. And little did I know, my cousin was directly across from me, and something spoke to us to say, look up. We looked up at the same time and saw each other bald for the first time. <laughs> we fell out laughing and we talked to each other through our spirits and thought, what the fuck did we just do? What did Where we just do? are we? And we just were dying laughing, man. And then we thought, okay, it's on. And it was just so many situations from there, man. Dang. That's that sounds like a really interesting time, but also a, a very fulfilling experience. I'm sure you created a lot of lifelong friendships and, and brotherhoods from being oh, yeah. being that time in the in the military. Now, what's probably the best thing you learned? The best away? thing I learned, you know, discipline was mm-hmm. something that I've always been very disciplined guy. But mm-hmm. even to this day, I still tuck my shoelaces in my shoes. <laughs> He's got them tucked in over here. My shoelaces are tucked in my shoes. That's something I learned in the Marine Corps. And, uh-huh. and it's just something that's stuck with me forever. Yeah. Because, you know, there's certain things that we do as bodybuilders, as fitness enthusiasts that are staples. Right. You know what I mean? And you right. stick to them always. You never right. change from them. Right. And, and this is something as weird as it might sound to somebody else. Mm-hmm. It just looks neat to me. It looks clean. And then my closet is a certain way. Yep. So I've got, I, I have these tendencies that I picked up in the Marine Corps. Yes, sir. No, sir. I got that as a kid, yep. but in, it was instilled even more as a Marine. Yeah. And a lot of these things have really helped me make it in life. And where it made you who the mold into the person who you are? It, re- it really does. Person. You know, yeah. at seventeen, I was very moldable at the time, right. and I'm just really thankful for that. You yeah. Know, you know, I excelled at being a Marine. I was pretty good. That's awesome, man. I, we again, we really appreciate it. My my fiance's brother went actually right through Pendleton as well. Mm. He did, I think he did three years as well too. And okay. Thank him for that service, um, of course. Now, did you go to school anywhere? Did you go to college or do you any, any kind of schooling after after high school? Nope, 17, straight in the straight Marine in the Corps. Marines. I had to get my parents' signature to go. Did you um, play any sports in high school? Nope, no, I didn't. No athletics, just, now how did you? I had to stop, so that was, that, that's a big story for me. Uh-huh. In, in high school, I was a great athlete growing right. up. Football, you know, I had, you know what Osgood Slaughters is? No, I do not. Osgood Slaughters is a situation with your knees. Well, I, I learned when I was young that I was predetermined almost to be a, a f- bodybuilder because mm-hmm. my quadriceps at the age of 14 were overdeveloped for the growth platelets in my knees. Interesting. So it caused massive pain. So mm-hmm. when I was playing football mm-hmm. before high school, mm-hmm. I was running around playing and my quadriceps were overdeveloped from all of the activity. Right. So at 14 years old, back then in 1979, the fix was, and here's what the doctor told me, they were going to put me in a cat, two casts for three months over the summertime and put me in a wheelchair. They were going to atrophy your legs. Atrophy my legs. No way, bro. You do not touch the leg gains. But when you're in pain, I know it's... A, I know. Well, and, and it was... They said you either stop playing sports now or... Uh-huh. Or you're, 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 you're going to going in the cast or you got to stop playing. So at 15, 16 years old, I couldn't imagine sitting in a wheelchair over the summer when my buddies no, were all course. out playing. So I stopped playing football yeah. and yeah. it broke my dad's heart to the... Matter of fact, on my dad's deathbed... Uh-huh. I said, Dad, I know I didn't go and play football like you wanted me to, but I'm a good man. I'm, you know, and I went into that whole speech. And literally while my dad was dying, because here's the God's honest truth. My uh-huh. dad was in the hospital. He, his whole plan was McKinley High School, Ohio State, Cleveland Browns. He had it mapped, mapped out, for, out for you. And when I didn't even play in high school after, you know, I just was done. Yeah. Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, but anyway, it just what you were talking to your dad about when he was yeah. on his, his his deathbed, and you you were telling him that yeah, you're yeah, still a good man. Yeah, I had some point I was going to make, but anyway, it just it it just didn't pan out for me, man. Mm-hmm. I didn't do it. But then when I got in the Marine Corps, I started playing rugby to make up for that. So ah, I played rugby in the Marine okay. Corps. So I went TAD on the rugby team, one round plate. Nice. What um, what got you in the fitness? My friends. 
friends, really? Yeah, they, uh, I was working in a gym. I was managing a fitness center, and a buddy of mine came up and said, hey, you should compete in a bodybuilding contest. I'm like, I don't want no part of that, man. These yeah. guys are all big. Yeah. You know, I look good the what way I do. What year is this? 88. Okay. But when I was playing rugby in the Marine Corps, after practice, we would come in, and there was a big mirror, mm-hmm. and you would look into the mirror, and mm-hmm. you know, it said, are you a good Marine or something like that, and we would always have our shirt off, and there was this bodybuilder named Gonzo, this kid from East LA. Gonzo. Yeah. And uh, he's Vegas. like, man, you need to be, a, you should be a bodybuilder. You should be a bodybuilder. So I started lifting in the Marine Corps. Sure. And uh, that's where it all started. But started competing in 88 because my buddy. So realistically, you kind of got into fitness almost for bodybuilding. Yeah. That's awesome. Kind of like well, me. Well, that was, yeah. Kinda, I kind of fall in your footsteps, big guy. Yeah. All right. Um, so you also have a background in motivational speaking. Yeah. How, what you got? What got you into that? That was just kind of a thing that happened, too. I was working at a gym, and a buddy of mine was... I always kind of knew I wanted to do that. I remember when we were kind of playing when I was in the fitness industry. We were like, you're going to be a motivational speaker someday. And my buddy's like, no, you're going to be a motivational. You got this ability. And I thought about it years ago, but one day a friend of mine, he was speaking in prisons, and he couldn't go. So he called me up and he said, will you go speak in prisons? I'm like, okay. I don't want to go speak in a prison, but right. will they pay me? Yeah. He's like, yeah, they'll pay you. And I'm like, how much? And he told me, and I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, that's good money. Yeah. It's like 500 bucks a day. I'm like, hell yeah, hell I'll go. Yeah. So I went and it just, it connected with me. Really? I realized that I had a gift and, and more than it. that, a desire. Yeah, a desire to it? really reach to people. Oh, I love it. Yeah. yeah. You still do any? Oh, yeah. What's probably one of the biggest crowds you ever had to talk in front of or speak in front of? 15,000 at Rupp. Uh, at Rupp, Rupp Arena. I know Rupp Arena. Yeah. Really? Yeah, with, Who uh, was that for? Franklin Graham. Really? I was uh, Billy Graham. You know Billy Graham. Mm-hmm. Billy Graham's son, Franklin yeah. Graham. Uh-huh. I was his kind of like right-hand man. I would go and so I, w- I got pictures of me sitting on a stage at Rupp Arena in front of 15, 20,000, whatever it holds there. Okay. And uh, then when he wouldn't speak, I'd go on his behalf. Wow. Very impressive. Yeah. Got a lot more fitness questions for you, but before before we get more into the fitness stuff, Gonna shift gears a little bit. So you also did something back in the day called the Power Team. Yep. Right. Yeah. So there's we got a lot of young subscribers, young viewers here. They might not be aware of what <laughs> with the Power Team. Yeah, Ray's only 24. So anytime we talk about music or movies or something, yeah. it's usually over his head. Right. Yeah. So Always. so I went deep into the the, the libraries of YouTube, and I, I unfortunately I couldn't find one with you on it. But I wanted to show this is a original from I guess probably the 80s. This is the Power wow. Team. Um, so power team wow. and why don't you just explain briefly what exactly the power team is So we'll, Ray why don't you go to uh, I think I had you at about five minutes go to the five-minute mark uh, go back. Wow, this is crazy Is that about five minutes? Yeah. I can't see that far. Yeah, you're good So this guy looks like he's about to run across the stage and break three two by fours or uh, four by Oh, it just plows right through them, all three of them slow-mo nice so these dudes are all pretty big all pretty buff and um, they also I, I just w- why don't you explain exactly what it is this is like uh, it's this is crazy man I I just got this rush <laughs> a rush of emotions so <clears throat> 19. 19- 88. Okay. I was probably at the bottom of my life. I was I was cheating on my girlfriend. I was running around. I was full of myself. I was winning bodybuilding shows. I had money. And I just lost myself, man. And this kid came in the gym one day, and uh, I was selling him a membership. And he said, you know, you need to get your life right with God. And I'm like, dude, don't you, can't you see who I am? Look at all this stuff around me, you know, all, yeah. all of these things that I had accomplished. Right. But I went home that night and it really got in my spirit. So I prayed, I got down on my knees that day and I prayed. I said, God, if you know, all this stuff, everyone says, if, if you know me, got all my hairs on my head numbered, send some, this guy was a nerd. I can't relate to him. Send somebody that I can relate to. No bullshit. A week later, a lady walks in the gym with a poster of these guys. Yeah. She says, do you mind if I hang up a poster in here? And she rolls it out, and it's these guys exactly. Because there have been these guys. These Because when I saw certain guys on here. Is he? Is this the main guy? John Jacobs, yeah. Okay. okay. He's, 
He could have everything. God, this is crazy. Yeah. To succeed so she rolls out this poster and it had all these big guys. And in my heart, I heard, oh, you don't think I know you? Here's, here's what you can relate to. And it's all these freaking guys. That was the sign. That was the sign. So I go to this meeting, and I'm going to make a long story short. I go sure. to this meeting. They had a front row seat for me, and these guys come running out and start doing all these stunts. Yep. And I'm, like, clapping like a little kid, and I'm engaged, and they give what's known as an altar call. And they said, if you want to change your life, if you want to get life, one, two, three, get up. Come. Uh, next thing I know, I'm down there, mm -hmm. and f hundreds of people around me. And that guy right there, from a stage just like that, imagine me standing down there in a pink boat neck with a with a <laughs> tank top <laughs> yeah and uh and some um, um, z cat and some uh freaking you know zubas zubas yes. and and some otomix shoes right yes the and a original fanny pack. bodybuilder attire yeah. ray and, go ahead and look that up, yeah, fanny look pack. That up. Yeah. this guy points down from the stage and he said you and i turn around and look around the room he goes you in the pink shirt i'm talking to you he said, come up here. And he calls me up on stage. Now I got all these guys around me, right. overwhelmed, because they're and all they're, like They six. look like big dudes. They're huge. I'm not going to lie. I'm in lie. the middle and of them. And they're doing some incredible stuff, yeah. to be honest. So anyway, these guys changed my life. Yeah. These guys altered the course of my life, because the girl wow. I was cheating on Interesting. Was my, is now my wife. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. You know, Man. and if it wasn't for these guys coming into my life at that time, with this message and this bravado and breaking shit and doing all that kind of stuff, who knows where I would be? Yeah. And and there's one guy in in, in the reason I got emotional is there's one guy in there now that's dead. Yeah. And uh, he absolutely it was his testimony mm -hmm. that I heard and I'm like this someone told him about my life and this is bullshit. This is not right because what he was saying I was living and I'm like yeah. this is not fair. Yeah, you know he was a big time football player, and I, yeah. that's what I wanted to do, and yeah. and it just it was unbelievable, man. So this were a lot you, of the you other, got me. Were a lot of the other guys kind of maybe somewhat like you at some point, where maybe they were in the crowd at some point and they got brought up and well, yeah, how, you how know, that, who, they who were definitely. Like, how was it started? Who are these guys? This guy was just a guy that had an idea. So the way he got this was he saw Franco Colombo blowing up the hot water bottle like I did here. Ray, pull, thing. pull the next clip and go to uh, 45 seconds. This is a little bit of a newer clip. It looks like they're still doing this. Yeah. And this one, in this next clip, you can see um, some of the stuff that they do a little bit more clear. And I yeah. know I know it's some of the stuff that you can do. Yeah. I've seen you do. Yeah. So go to uh, about 45 seconds there, Ray. So this, about 45 this looks, seconds right there? Uh, that's eight. Eight, okay, to, I can't yeah, see. Yeah, go to 45. Uh, where's you're, my cursor? You're right, right, right. Keep going. Right, keep go going. a little bit more. Going, keep going. Keep going. Right there. Right stop. there. Right Click there. it. Okay. Yeah. My vision's not that good. Sorry. Okay. So he's blowing up a, a hot water bottle right now. And Clark, I just did that the other day. I was going to say, you can still do this, right? Yeah. Okay. That is painful, man. I've been smacked in the face and the smacked in the balls. I wondered if it actually hurt. Like yeah. It, no, it does. See, his arm got rubber. Yeah. Okay. So the the guy that so he, now he's tearing a phone book. Yep. You can do this too, right? Yep. Okay. I can teach you how to do that easily. All right. Yeah. But let's the guy go. that started this saw Franco Colombo blowing up the hot water bottle, and then he got the idea. In, uh, pumping iron, didn't they? Yep. 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 Okay. As a hook, right? We use hooks in business to get people's attention. That's what they're doing. This is a hook. I like it. It's an impressive hook. Yeah. I mean, it definitely got my attention. Um, the re and then the reason I wanted to bring it up because a I thought it was pretty cool, but it's it's incredibly impressive. And uh, I was just curious, like what the what the kind of the, the background. I mean, did you did you so you ended up being one of these guys, right? So with this on the group, stage, I didn't perform with the power team. There uh -huh. was one day I was sitting in a limo driving down the street with the attorney for the power team, and I heard John Jacobs, the main guy, say, "I don't want anyone on the team under six feet." And I looked at the attorney like, "Oh, what about <laughs> me? You brought me here for this?" <laughs> oh, that night when he called me up on the stage, he told me quit my job and go to church three times a week. So I went back to the gym that I, and I walked in and quit. I, I quit. Yeah. And they're like, would you get saved or something? I'm like, yeah, as a matter of fact, I did. Yeah. And that was that. So yeah, these, you uh, never know who you're going to run across in life or what you're going to experience in life and how it can change you in a positive manner. Yeah. So good job. You, I got you on the fake weights video. You got me on this video, man. <laughs> that just, that just freaking affected well, me. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad that we could actually bring up some, some positive, wow. positive past thoughts for you, man. That's awesome. That's good. So, all right, now let's talk a little bit more about fitness because I got I got lots of questions, Clark. You've been in uh, fitness a long time, right? Mm -hmm. You um and you did did you have a coming to moment like where you're like oh, I want to help people or I want to train people or 
was there any like coming to moment or you just mainly got in it to the for the bodybuilding and then you ended up kind of falling deeper into it so it's it's opposite of what you just said it was more of an ego thing than it was wanting to help people. okay okay yeah. and honesty love it no yeah, i'm gonna be honest yeah. as hell and, and here's here's how honest it was a, a very good friend of mine who was on that team with me uh-huh before actually before me he his life got changed there he was a real famous bodybuilder back in the 80s okay and i was in the gym business i was at home with my roommates i had a muscle and fitness magazine on the coffee table yeah. i had all my weed on the cover of that muscle and fitness taking the seeds out that was back when they had seeds yeah, and weed yeah, old swag. i don't know if you don't remember that no. if you're under 24 they had <laughs> seeds and weed at one time <laughs> so i was separating it out and <laughs> this guy was on the cover and <laughs> it said world's most handsome bodybuilder and i looked at it, i'm like i'm better looking than this guy <laughs> what and it was that point i decided i wanted to get in the magazines yeah. so i saw bodybuilding as a way a vehicle to get me there so when i was at bodybuilding contests i always look for photographers backstage okay. And then that's kind of how the whole thing started. So um, would you say, what was your, maybe, where did you end up in the bodybuilding ranks? What was some of your best wins or accomplishments or title? So my very first show that I entered was the Muscle Mania, which is now a I, big deal. I remember Muscle Mania. It was the it's very the WBFF now, I think. I don't I know think. what who owns it or what, I but think. it was an NPC show yeah. back right. then. Okay. And... I entered the show my first time, like I trained for maybe six weeks when my buddy told me, you need to be a bodybuilder. That's what happened next. He goes, there's a show coming up. You should get in it. I went and I went to go check in. I was checking in novice and a buddy of mine said, dude, go, go open. open. I'm like, well, what's open? I don't even know what it is. Both. You know what I mean? Yeah. Come on, come on. So I jumped in. I ended up winning my weight class, which was light heavyweight. And then I won the overall. So light heavy, you came in at like 189 or 199 or so? Yeah, I was yeah. like, yeah, between, it was yeah. between 188 and 198 yeah. was the cutoff. Okay. So I ended up doing that, and then I, then I got catapulted because I won the overall. I couldn't go compete against, you know, in, schleps. In the, yeah, I had to gotta, go against good guys. You got to start going against cream the So there were guys coming up then, like in the <clears throat> Palm Springs in 1989, uh, Chris Cormier was in the Palm Springs very in 1989. Very ended up having a very successful pro career. Yeah, so uh -huh. he was in there, and then uh, Adi Ray. If you look up Adi Ray on, I remember Adi Ray at the Muscle Mania years later after everyone made fun of me for winning the Muscle Mania originally, I think Luz Wick got the name from me because he asked for Why would pictures. they make fun of you for winning the Muscle Mania? Because it was, it was the first time ever, like Muscle Mania. Cause oh, it was like the new... Yeah, the, the new, new way okay, to name it because it was always gotcha. San Diego, the North County, the Palm yeah. Springs, the, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. whatever town you were in. In the, in the fitness bodybuilding industry, when something new comes along, a lot of people scoff at it for oh, a they while. they scoff at, at the name. Yeah, they made fun of Muscle Mania, that. what's that? Yeah. When Men's Physique came out, scoffing. Yeah, oh, yeah Bikini, big time scoffing there's yep. still a lot of that going on yeah. so whatever yeah it's very it uh, grows yeah. the industry it grows the sport it brings more money bring, gives more opportunity for people to compete and show off different physiques yeah that's stop, it man. stop being negative yeah so but anyway so you ended up winning the muscle Mania as your first show yeah my first show then i <laughs> competed a bunch after that i don't think i ever won anything ever again i was always second and third because i was in these big shows like that were on espn like yeah if, did you google any of those you got any yeah, of those yeah, on I, I already know about those but yeah one, you can pull up so we've got some we got trust me we've got oh, lots yeah. of good footage oh, okay. so we're gonna get to the ju right. we're getting to the juicy <laughs> stuff we're getting to the juicy, <laughs> stuff. We're getting oh, to the juicy juice i'm scared so now. so you, you won some shows and then you saw a photographer backstage and that's how you got into the fitness modeling and fitness photography yeah. All right. Now, how many covers have you had? About 130 something. That maybe. is super impressive. And we're not talking covers of your local bodybuilding or fitness man. We're talking Iron Man magazine. We're talking Muscle and Fitness. We're talking Muscle Mag. All of them. Flex. Yeah. No. No flex. You got to no be flex. a pro. Okay. Pro like IFBB pro. I was. Ah. Uh, okay. No. Okay. That yeah. makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Interesting. I didn't know that they had that. But that makes sense. Yeah. So you've had a, a quite a few covers. I think you and uh, Mike O'Hearn, old Titan. I think you guys both have the We're share up. for. He's um, way way ahead of me. You yeah. Know? I so, think Mike multiplies. If, if you guys, <clears throat> for some of the younger viewers here, I like so Clark came on the six pack. We'll talk about this here in a little bit. But Clark, when Clark came on the six pack, I knew Clark. Like I remembered him. And he didn't necessarily know who I was because I'm I'm necessarily I'm like a nobody at the oh, time. So, nah. so not anymore. Not in, in the, at the time, but like not anymore. So I knew Clark, and I literally when I, I was like, dude, I thought you, he'd be taller. 
<laughs> yeah, that was the second thing I thought. <laughs> oh, man, shit, I'm taller than he is. Hell <laughs> yeah, boy. No, just kidding. So, but I was like, bro, I remember you from freaking Iron Man magazine. Because I, li- I had, uh, the in the 90s, I... And my dad threw him away when I finally went off to college, and I'm still, dad, I'm, I'm, I'm still mad about that. Dad, I had him dad. stacked up or categorized, organized, but I remember you from a lot of them, and I do remember a very, very specific ad. Um, go ahead and pull up Ray, the one. It's second link right there. It says Shapeshifter Magazine. I had a trouble I finding you. this one. The oh. evolution of, of the new theory of evolution. The new theory of so evolution. So this ad, and I'm going to, correct me if I'm wrong, but this was actually a two-page spread in oh, the yeah. middle of like Iron Man magazine. So fitness and bodybuilding, this is the mecca. This is the biggest magazine in circulation, and you open this thing up, and it was two pages wide. EAS was one of the first companies doing protein and pushing creatine and supplements. I remember I used to buy that stuff all the time. This is one of the most iconic ads for supplements in, in history. Do you agree? In and not to blo- I'm not blowing up no. your ego. Like, <laughs> I literally remember this as a teenager. Yeah, it had nothing to do with me because I wasn't the original guy. Uh-huh. It was uh, Mike Ryan. And you, a lot of people remember Mike Ryan, the celebrity trainer. He uh-huh. was supposed to do it, but he backed out because he didn't want to get fat. That's actually shot in order. Yeah. Everyone thinks that it was photoshopped or shot backwards. Yeah, they, they you actually got out of shape for it. Right? I got fat for yeah. that ad. I was shooting a cover, and Dang. the photographer was on the ma- on the phone, and he was arguing with somebody, and he's like, you told me you would do it, you were going to do it. And they hung up the phone, and he looked at me, and he said, Clark, will you get fat for an ad? And I said, how much are you going to pay me? <laughs> and Everybody's got a price. Yep, so he told yeah. me, and I was on hiatus from my TV show. Well, I was between Kiana's Flex Appeal and my TV show, and I knew I didn't have to be anywhere except for Canton, Ohio. Okay. In a few weeks, and they all want to show you off, right? Uh-huh. When you go home, of course. But uh, I started getting fat, and it took me longer to get fat than it took me to get back in shape. So what you that, do? That thing was, was huge. Eat? That was billboards. And I was everything. gonna say, don't I you? Have, I think I remember a story about a billboard, and you climbed up on the billboard to take a picture with it, yep. and I think the officer yep. let you go because he realized it was you on the billboard. Oh, yeah, I, I got it. He <laughs> asked for my autograph. I said, "It's not a ticket, is it?" He's like, "Nope." I'm like, "Okay, I'll sign it. <laughs> I'll definitely sign that one." Now, speaking of Kiana Tom, this is this brings back memories for me as well. So, for those of you who don't know who Kiana Tom is or or was in the day. Um, like Clark, she was kind of iconic in fitness, and she had a TV show that was on ESPN two. It was on pretty much every morning. Which, when I'm, you know, it, when you're a kid and you're waking up and you got to be at school at seven thirty in the morning, and also on Saturdays when you wake up and there's no cartoons on or anything, this is what was on. And I was always watching sports, like with my dad and stuff. Yeah. So automatically ESPN two would come on sometimes on TV from the night before or something. So Kiana, and this is actual, I found one of you guys together. Why don't you go ahead and play this, play this Ray Ray. So that's Kiana. And this was on ESPN too, but you guys did. There's look Clark. At you boy. Look, look at him. At, look, <laughs> at, look at diced. Look at diced. <laughs> I got that. that uh, you got the headband, headband. going. Headband. Okay, so there's Kiana. There's Clark. And this is, and where is this filmed? This one was Maui. Maui. Yeah. Okay, so. Kiana, uh, as a as a young boy, she I was a fan favorite. She had a great <laughs> physique, and she wore fantastic outfits for yes. a teenage boy to watch at eight thirty in the morning on Saturdays. But I what I, else I, did you do at eight thirty in the morning on Saturdays? Uh, after eating cereal, I, I went to the gym. Oh, okay, you didn't masturbate or anything. <laughs> yeah, Kiana, you know me better than you think you know me. <laughs> but anyway, so how? Did you get in? Because I like it's just weird that everything comes full circle. I remember seeing this as a kid, and like, so it's now I'm like, weird, okay, yeah. yeah, it's just a little weird. I was like, I might have seen you on there yeah. at some point. How did you get into this? And so, this is ESPN too. This isn't like, oh no, this, this was a big deal, bum, like public public access TV. No, this yeah. was a big deal. I I owned a sheepskin store by the seashore. And hold on, <laughs> hold it, hold it, hold on. Wait, you repeat. what? Yeah. I owned a sheepskin store this, by the seashore. You're, you're being serious? I did. I owned a sheepskin store in, in Encinitas, <laughs> California. I feel like you're trying uh, we'll, to we'll, we'll go back to that later. Continue. <laughs> so I was in my little store, and a guy that I used to work in the gym slinging with. Slinging sheepskins. <laughs> slinging sheepskins. He walked by, and I walked out, and he's like, Clark, I haven't seen you. I've been trying to find you. I ran into this girl named Kiana who's auditioning for a TV show, and it's, I think you'd be perfect for it. Here's her number. So I get the number and I go up 
and I do the audition and just nailed it. Nailed it. And, uh, and the rest is history. She I was used on. to do host the Fitness America pageant too, I think, yeah, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Which were also on TV, on, on ESPN, ESPN too. I hosted all the time. Some of those too on ESPN. Did you really? Oh, yeah. So was this, uh, this was paid? Oh, yeah. Paid pretty well. Oh, it was great. So right here, after those segments, we would cut. And I would run down to the beach down there and go swim and swim, swim and hang out and get tan. They would scream down over the edge, Clark, you're up. And I would come back up. They would put makeup back on me and I'd go and start working out again. That actually sounds like a hell of a lot of fun. Sounds six fun. weeks, the beach man. And working out all six day. Six weeks. So you would film for like six weeks at a time and then they would, they would edit them and, yep. and, and show yep. them or air them. Yep. Hey, Ray, I think you go to the go to the. Go to the next. Go to the go next. To go one. to the next one. No, next go to the one? next video. Just let it. Yeah. Oh, just let it play. Yeah. yeah. Run it out. All yeah. Right. Hit that. Hit that. There we go. There's Clark. Okay. Oh. Now we got some footage. So Clark was a, again. Like I said, I used to watch these shows growing up, and it's just so crazy that you're here now. Like I watched <laughs> you growing up because literally I fell in love with bodybuilding at a very young age. Like it was when I was 11 or 12. My dad took me to the Arnold class. It was like 96 or something, and I just I remember this. Physique looks great, man. Thanks, man. That's uh good posing. How much did you weigh right there? I was one seventy five. One seventy five. Thirty four yeah. years young. So we're just about the same age and uh, Wow. Interesting. So funny story about one of these shows one time. I was doing the Muscle Mania and I think it was the year after this. I got second here, I think. What whatever year it was. We're in, you know how the only the top five come out and pose. Yeah, of course. So there's the like 30 guys in my weight class, and my wife's out there explaining to everybody, yeah, you know, the top five will come out. So they line up all 30, and we're walking off stage, and they have the expert editor. They're like, yep. you made it, you didn't, you made it, you didn't, That's you exactly made it. exactly how it still works. I walk past. He's like, you didn't make it. And I'm like, whoa, time out. I'm Clark Bartram. I, of course I made it. He's like, you didn't make it, and it's chaos, right? It's, it's chaos. So I go back. I wipe off all my tanning. I take off everything. I put my clothes on. I throw my backpack over my shoulder. I get one foot out the door. God's honest truth. Clark, Clark, where are you at? I said, I'm leaving, man. They said, we made a mistake. You're next. You're oh, posing. And this no. is broadcast on ESPN. So, yeah, and so now you're cold. No more pump, I'm no cold, more tan. No more pump, no more tan, no more nothing. Yeah, so you're Tito Raymond washed out. Yeah. Yep, Tito Raymond was, going, was posing right before me. And I remember his routine. He did a backflip at, at the end. Whoa, I'm pulling off. It's hard to follow yep, up with something I'm pulling like that. off my clothes. I'm getting ready. And my wife's like, I guess he didn't make it. So Because five people had already gone. Ronnie Coleman was judging. Not, not Mr. Olympia. Yeah. The other Ronnie yeah. Coleman. Who is a great bodybuilder himself. He says, where's Clark at? He's supposed to be. I had him at two. And everyone else was like, yeah, we had Clark at two. My judging card fell off the table onto the ground. So they let me go, and they let another guy come up. Oh, no. And when you hear the commentary, you can hear the guy talking about me because they let him do the comment. Yeah, he, does, he looks all right, and he uh -huh, just kind of uh – because -huh. he didn't really make the top five, and yeah. I was second. Yeah. But I saw Tito do the backflip, and I was literally wiping off stuff still or wiping on my tanning oil still uh -huh. and, and walked out like nothing ever happened and hit stage. And Really? How'd you, how'd you end up doing? Second place. Second place. Yeah. Nice, Tito. dude. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm glad yeah. we. I'm glad we found some of that vintage, yeah. vintage footage. Look at that bring, hair. Bring, that's definitely. You got some some body to that hair, man. You got some <laughs> yeah. waves. Yeah. Got a little interview here. This is that. great. This is great. All right. So, um, moving on from the bodybuilding. Now, last few years, you actually got recognized by the ISSA as a master trainer, right? Yes. How'd you do that? Just body of work man just staying it staying in staying, staying active in, in the industry staying active in the industry getting people results yeah getting people results impressive and, man and, uh, yeah. was that pretty a fulfilling fulfilling moment it is you know when you're recognized for what you do in anything mm -hmm. you know whether it's football and you're recognized for being the best offensive player the best defensive player it's great to be recognized by your peers yeah for doing certain things. So, yeah. yeah without of course it Patrick absolutely Gambeau, is. a big shout out to Pat Patrick Gambo and they also recognize me in the the DETC, the distance education training, something I don't know what it is, but yeah, pretty okay. cool stuff. Nice man. Now, in fitness altogether, what would you say was one of your most fulfilling moments through your in your fitness career? Was it getting all the covers? Was it winning the bodybuilding show? Was it getting a master trainer? What would you say was most fulfilling for you? Being an example to my kids for my whole entire life. Yeah. You know, my kids have seen me be consistent and work hard 
set the and example. Set the example. You know, as much as I love all of the accomplishments that I've had, now that I'm in a different place in my life and I can sit back and observe yeah. more than be in it. Right. And I watch my kids and I look and see what they do and how they interact in life and the way they go after things. And when I hear them say the occasional, like the other day, my son was doing an interview with somebody and he said, yeah, watching my dad as a bodybuilder growing up in a fitness model, just hearing those two things out of his mouth. It's got to be fulfilling. It was so fulfilling. And I'm like, you know what? That is the crowning jewel of everything that I've ever worked for in this industry. Absolutely, man. Well, you definitely had an impact on me, even though maybe I didn't necessarily know it directly at the time or I really didn't necessarily know who you were specifically by name, but you definitely had an impact on me and you still do. I appreciate that, bro. So, and I, I mean that. So let's talk about a little bit about the frog. You may have seen this guy in some ads pushing, pumping himself around on this device with wheels and rubber bands. And let's just briefly talk about this, Ray. Why don't you just Google the frog? And uh, okay, okay, we're just going to okay. briefly touch on this. What yeah, exactly is on the, YouTube? What exactly is the frog? Worst fun you've ever had. Worst fun you've ever had. It's just a piece of exercise equipment, right? It's a total body training device, and I was introduced to it by Mike O'Hearn, who was the okay. spokesperson okay. for the company. Okay. And he... There we go. The frog is everywhere. Okay. Yeah. So it's got, and it's got <laughs> variable tension. You can change the amount of tension on the, the bands? Yep, you can change those bands, okay. and it stands up and goes vertical. Okay. But looking at it, you can see it obviously works the whole body. You can right. see that it's it's something that's going to get your cardio. You can, this looks like they're in Russia somewhere doing it, but. Uh, <laughs> it's dogs super in the cool, and that yeah. dude's wearing board shorts. <laughs> it's, honestly, you can't look at it and really truly understand how, painful it is and how much it works i've been all around the nfl the nba crossfit these are old old videos this is like the prototype of it okay yeah this is this right. is before it yeah goes. and i was gonna the, the reason i'm asking you about this because you, you got to travel to some nfl teams and do it in f- all around the league man yeah had fun i've had some of the greatest athletes on the planet get on this thing anybody anybody memorable you come across going through the teams anybody that just struck a note with you yeah, you know who really loved it the most was uh, A.B., Antonio, Brown? your boy. Really? Yeah. yeah. No kidding. Yeah. He does like um, <clears throat> very, he does a lot of outside-the-box training. He actually yeah. has a sports scientist that travels around with him and does his training, and they analyze his numbers. Literally, I was watching Hard Knocks the other night, and they were comparing him. The total yards he ran uh, of all of his routes and verse and his average speed, he ran it. So they were, he was saying like, you know, you ran a total of 70,000 yards last year and with an average speed of 12 miles an hour. And that was better than the next three closest guys. And they wouldn't say their names, but I'm sure they were like good receivers too. And they, they were like two seconds off your mark and blah, 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 blah. And you had the most touchdowns. So, you know, I'm not trying to blow AB up or anything, but it's pretty cool when you put that type of thought and that kind of science and apply it to, to either football or health and fitness or something, you can really, yeah. Challenge the body yeah. and the mind. Uh, so no, he, he loved the frog, and we actually had his own custom one made for him. Did you really? And if you go deep into his Instagram account, you can see him on it. And really? really? I've definitely it. seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Ray, Ray, Ray knows us something. Ray knows. Yeah, yeah Ray finally <laughs> caught up to us, man. <laughs> it's, it's about time. Well, that's because it's Antonio Brown, I think. Okay, so, there you go. Something so, relevant. So the company now is they're not in operation anymore? It's it's kind of on the DL, and okay. I assumed all of the inventory because at some point along the line, because of my love for the product, honestly, uh-huh. I became synonymous with it, uh-huh. and everyone kind of thought I owned it, and yeah. I never did. A guy by the name of Richard Pierce who popped up on that video for a second was uh-huh. the one who invented it, uh-huh. and I, he gets all the credit and all the respect. The guy went through hell to get this thing engineered properly and tons of money and tons of research and and I just fell in love with it, man. I became a president of the company for a while. Then I was out throughout the NFL and all around the the world, literally. Yeah. I traveled the world yeah. putting people on this thing and showing them how effective it is. And and I still use it to this day. And That's great, man. i got all the inventory now. That's I need great. to sell some. Yeah. If you need a frog, up. hit up Clarky. Get you a frog. So you're, you're, you're extremely talented, extremely multifaceted. Also do a little acting, or you've done a little acting. Yep. Batman. Let's Batman. talk about that. Yeah. How did, how did you end up in a role of Batman? And what kind of film was it? And where can people find it? So this is, it's an interesting story. When they were looking to do The Dark Knight, 
It was it The Dark Knight Returns with Christian Bale? Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. The yeah, Dark The Knight. Dark Knight Returns with Christian Bale. They were looking for the director and the person that was going to play yeah. Batman. Mm-hmm. And a friend of mine who's a friend now who I didn't know at the time was going to do his version of that to show Hollywood. So he yeah. put his money where his mouth was. So he went out and he wanted to find a bodybuilder to play Batman because he wanted someone that didn't need a plastic suit. That was his whole idea, but he wanted someone who was athletic. Mm -hmm. So apparently, from what I heard, he auditioned hundreds of bodybuilders and couldn't find one athletic enough to really move around like Batman needs to move around because not everyone's like you, you know. So he apparently gave up his hope to do this. And actually, Sylvester Stallone was going to play the part. He was between Rocky Five and Rambo at the time. Okay. He was doing nothing. Right. So he was going to do it, and he backed out at the last minute because his agent told him not to. So mm-hmm. this director guy, the guy that wrote it, was at Starbucks one day, and he saw a business card of a friend of mine, Jason Ellis, the photographer. I know who Jason Ellis is. And he's like, oh, maybe he knows the someone. The king of covers. Yep. So he grabs it, and he calls up Jason Ellis. He goes, I need a guy with a square jaw, blue eyes, deep voice, good-looking, fit body, and Jason was getting ready to say my name, and he's like six feet tall. And he's like, oh, damn, you, that, <laughs> that was my buddy Clark, but he's like 5'8", yeah. you know? He's like, I don't care. I'm tired of looking. We can make it happen. Yeah. Call him. Tell him. So he calls Size me. Size only matters in sex. Yeah. <laughs> so he calls oh. me, <laughs> and I said, nope, I'm not Got going. for my dad. <laughs> I'm not going. And my buddy talked me into going, so I go up and I read for this part. Okay. And, and uh Next thing I know, you know, I'm going back again, and then here I am. I'm making this movie. So uh, it's, this, is, this is Hollywood, right? It, well, no, it's it's a, a fan film, okay, an independent fan okay. film okay. that was well, meant to where, where be a it? calling card. We okay. shot it in Burbank. So okay. the so rest of the story is yeah, in Cali. Yeah. So we we get this thing done. And I see it. And I'm like, oh, this is pretty badass. And I had so much fun. I really embodied. I I be literally. I became Batman. I mean, it was it was something else. So this is Andrew Koenig. He he played on Growing Pains. He played Boner on Growing Pains. Was it Boner? <laughs> boner. I don't know. Remember? Uh, not Boner, but it was Growing Pains or uh, that was his name, Boner. Yeah. Really. Okay. Yeah. But uh, that scene right there was epic. I remember Growing Pains. Yeah. Okay. But so we showed this at Comic Con. And it took Comic-Con over. It absolutely, completely took this thing over. Anyway, so Hollywood heard about it. They got, the director got called in. And Warner Brothers, actually, I talked to Warner Brothers and DC Comics. And they, they just really praised me. I wasn't a big enough actor to do it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's, that's how it went. But you've done a couple other acting gigs? Uh, Hunter Prey. Yeah, yeah, I saw that one. On, I saw that one on your uh, IMDb. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, I got that up right now. He's got an IMDb page, ladies and yeah, gentlemen. IMDb if you got page. the IMDb page, you're legit. My dad's got an IMDb page. He does? Oh, really? Yeah, he had a little cameo in the movie Love and Other Drugs with. Um, he's actually had a couple. Like back in the day, he was in uh, Hoffa, like as an extra. Oh wow, yeah, extra. But in uh, Love and Other Drugs, he actually had a speaking part. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, Jake Gyllenhaal, and I think it's Anne Hathaway. But it's about. Um, I think the guy's a pharmaceutical rep, rep, and he's basically falls in love with this uh, young uh, lady that gets Parkinson's. And the movie's kind of about Parkinson's, which my dad has. So they, the reason he ended up in it was because he was kind of, uh, I guess, president of the Parkinson's Foundation of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where he's from and I'm from. And they had him come up and speak. Um, the, in, the, in the scene, they have, they show, I guess, they got a couple people that actually had Parkinson's to speak, and they showed them at this assembly, and they're just kind of talking but his his line was you know i can't even remember how to tie a fucking tie oh you know so wow. but it's cool you know it hits it hits me in the heart and yeah it's, it's good for him so there you go now you get to cry <laughs> now you get to cry everybody's crying yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm next. no crying in the <laughs> six pack lab <laughs> love you dad man so really cool experience so you end up doing a little bit of That's acting cool. too so I remember when we brought you on the six pack, they were they were calling. I remember Travis Bowles at the time yeah, who was Travis running is a big fan, big fan because I guess he was big in the Comic Con world. Yeah. I remember he's like, "We got Batman coming." I was like, "Really?" <sighs> Ends up being Clark, and you came on board with us, and you really hit a couple home runs with us with some really fantastic programs. The Abs After Forty Advanced and Test Max Nutrition. It's pretty enjoyable for you, right? Oh, it's this place is awesome. Yeah. You know, and coming here and getting to work with you and all of the other great people that are here, this has been just such a phenomenal 
experience for me and i can't wait for the next evolution you know because we you, what we're doing. You, you interviewed tom harder and uh you know that guy's ready to take this rocket ship to the moon man and i just you know honestly if you're out there and you're a fan and you've been a fan and you've supported this company for a long time first of all thank you and second of all hang on because it, it's about to get real yeah uh for real for real for yeah. real i mean we've had a lot of stuff going on we we're bringing a lot of awesome faces back, awesome personalities back, and I'm excited to be working with you again, big guy. Yeah. I mean, I thought we had a really good working relationship together. Oh, yeah. And yes, Six Pack is on the pivot right now, and we've got a lot of stuff on the horizon for you, for you guys. Now, before we move on to my last question, Ray Ray, let's go to the rapid fire round. <laughs> All right, Mr. Clark, I'm just gonna hit you with. A couple rapid fire questions. We like to do this at the end. Just get the thoughts right off the top of your head. You ready? Yep. All right. Favorite color? Blue. Favorite song? God, I don't have one. What favorite song on your current playlist? Current play. I don't even have playlist. Favorite. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Real young guy raised like what? Yeah, I like playlist. what? I can't, I can't think of a favorite song. I, Maybe, I what so about many. what I about such an eclectic what favorite workout music? I don't listen to music. Oh, he goes. Out. He goes for the mind muscle. I go connection, raw. The yeah. pump. He goes go raw, raw dog. Dang. All right. Favorite <laughs> book. Where your mind goes, you go by Clark Bartram. Nice. Clark's also an author. In case you, in case yeah. you want to best know that selling author. Best selling <laughs> author. Uh, favorite exercise. Favorite exercise. Deadlifts. Nice. Favorite gym you've been to. Favorite gym I've been to. Honestly, mine. Your home gym, the, my the driveway. Gym. My my, I got. I'm gonna come out there. Gym. I'm gonna yeah. come out there. Favorite place you travel to? Favorite place I travel to, and this is gonna be a corny answer, wherever I'm at, because it's about being present in the Living moment, in the moment, man. One hundred percent. What right. about the least favorite place you travel to? I know you traveled a lot. It's got to be something. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be something. Memorable. Least favorite place I ever went. I I don't think I really like hated anywhere. Uh huh. I, yeah. You know, everywhere's got something cool to offer. Yeah. Everywhere does have something to offer. Sometimes yeah. you just have to look. for I it. I look for it. That's what I when I yeah. travel, I go look for stuff. Yeah. I know this is not rapid fire, but yeah. yeah. No, this is this is about as rapid as we go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Favorite superhero. Right. Favorite Batman. Duh. Duh. Favorite food. Favorite food. Cheat food, real food, what kind of food? Any food. Let's so okay. So that includes cheat foods. I guess both, maybe. Yeah, let's do both. Favorite healthy food, favorite cheat food. Yeah. Go. Okay. So cheat food first, cheesecake. Nice. Okay. And There's a Grand Lux Cafe right up the street. That's, healthy the, that's food. the fancy cheesecake factory. Yeah, they a get the nice, oh. perfectly cooked piece of salmon. Nice. Love me some salmon. Not yeah. too fishy. Had a, have, a, have a client that sends some down from Alaska, and it is yeah. the most amazing. Yeah, you got to get good salmon. It just melts in your mouth. All right, Clark, that's end of the rapid fire round. Very nice. Thank you for participating. Now, yeah. let's talk a little bit before we wrap things up here. Let's talk about what can what can everybody expect? What are we going to see out of you? What what are, maybe you just give a little, little sneak peek? What are some things we can expect? Are we going to see on maybe some programs again? Are we going to maybe some su new supplements coming out? What do you think? So as a man over 50, that's the role that I am coming here to fulfill and fulfill to the highest level I possibly can. I take what I do very seriously. I'm very passionate and very yes. excitable. Yes. And we were just in the office just having a brain. I flew in today. We went into the office. We sat down at a desk just like this and we started brainstorming ideas of, you know, different workouts and different ways to get people's attention our job first you need to understand we need to get your attention because there's so many people out there looking to get your attention but here's what i want to tell you after that happens we want to provide you with the tools necessary to help you live in your healthiest body and as a man over 50 i know it's possible and i know for a fact that there's so many men out there over 50 who feel like crap who are looking for solid answers solid supplementation solid coaching and just solid support you're gonna get all that here at you know it, it's gonna happen here man yeah absolutely you know there, there's no doubt about it so i could go on and on man mm -hmm. but look stay tuned make sure you watch the youtube channel i know we're changing the name i don't know if that's been released or anything yet yeah on, i'm not sure yeah I'm, okay I'm so there just just hang in there guys yeah. listen there are a lot of guys that i've connected with through our social media channels i'm coming back and i'm He's coming back, back with a vengeance man He's coming yes. back, baby yep. really excited clark we got a lot of cool stuff on the horizon i did see you guys in there pounding the brainstorm session we've been doing a lot of stuff yep, really yep, excited yep. to have you back in town man have you back on the squad been staying active 
All right, Ray. So for episode number four of the Six Pack Lab podcast, we had a fantastic episode today. We talked about purple power. We talked about some purple fruits and veggies. Maybe a little <laughs> bit of a little bit of purple haze. Uh, which maybe I'm gonna go check out right now. But we also talked a little bit about some gym fails to fixes. We found out about fake weights. They're very prevalent in the fitness industry <laughs> with photo shoots, which we didn't know about. Yeah. And then we talked about Clark. We got a good background on one of our favorite trainers here at Six Pack Abs. For Clark Bartram and Coach Johnny Catanzana, this is Six Pack Lab. For Clark, thank you so much, brother. Thank you, sir. Always have a appreciate you having here. All right, Ray Ray. For Coach Johnny Catanzano here, episode number four of the podcast, Six Pack Lab. We'll see you next time. Oh, I know what you were trying. You were, you were trying to force that. <laughs>